when you were in your top shape when everyone was saying Lazar is using no doubt in my mind you were taking only cleanse or no steroids but now when people don't say yeah, Lazar is the... in his best shape you're actually using now What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreleads.com. Today we are going to be reacting to Lazar Angelov. Am I natural? My opinion on steroids, the truth. So I have not watched this yet. Um, I did watch his video the other day on is Frank Zane's physique attainable naturally though, where he was talking with uh, Kevin Lavroni about Frank Zane. He literally just asked Lavroni. He was like, uh, what do you think that Frank Zane's physique is achievable naturally? Lavrone. Is it Lavrone or Lavroni? I always fuck it up. Um, said yes. And then Lazar is kind of like, oh, you know, comes down to genetics. It's like, yeah, okay, no shit. We all know that. And then in the comments section, he says his stats and he says, we're not discussing if he personally is natural, but is a physique like his attainable naturally. I've just checked his stats. He looks smaller than he actually was. Arm size, 18 inches at 85 kilograms and five to 7% body fat. And then he, like, I don't know if these are his peak statistics, but he says, my arm size never got past 44 centimeters and I was 90 kilograms. I think it would be hard, but I've seen a lot bigger guys claim natty. So Lazar, as far as I know, he is, I did the calculation over here. So he's 1.8 meters in height, which in feet and inches is about five foot 10.8. So, you know, round it up to five foot 11 at the most. Whereas Frank Zane was five foot nine and would come into a competition at like the high 180s, supposedly. Whereas Lazar would be, Lazar probably never got as lean as Zane. I don't know if he stepped on stage or not at any point, but he was like, if you've seen Lazar, you know how shredded that guy fucking was back in his peak. So he was 200 pounds at, you know, two inches taller which if you look at the proportional metrics on a, you know, the, the classic Arnold distribution weight thing that we always refer to, it's like seven pounds per inch in height is kind of an accurate way to represent proportionally what each additional inch should be muscle distribution wise in a physique, you know, give or take. And so we'd add like, you know, 14 pounds to Frank Zane's body weight to get roughly what, you know, like a five foot 11, Frank Zane would weigh in at, and we're looking at like about 200 pounds. So, but again, that's a shredded stage ready Frank Zane versus a shredded, probably another, you know, five pounds or so to lose of fat Lazar. But still, man, like for a guy, Frank Zane is a three time Mr. Olympia, and we're comparing him to Lazar Angelov right now, who is not an Olympia winner at all. But we're, you know, discussing his natural status. So, like, interestingly enough, Lazar presents the question, do you think Frank Zane could be natural or, like, his physique attainable naturally a few weeks ago, which probably is not, like, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to claim Natty in the video I'm about to watch, but if he does, it's not going to work in his favor, this discussion, in my opinion. Like, even this guy, not even Zane with Zane genetics could attain the Zane physique without steroids. So it's like, any kind of discussion, I don't even know why it comes up where people will say, they'll be like, yeah, I think if you have good enough genetics, then that physique is achievable. And it's like, well, if we're talking about cream of the crop genetics, would it not be more accurate to just say, okay, so what did the guy with the actual genetics <laughs> that was that guy, what did he have to do to achieve it? And with Zane, we all know he was sauced. And I suspect he used probably more than he claims because he claimed his usage was extremely minimal to the point where the cycle would barely be like almost qualifying as like high normal sports CRT at that point. So I'm pretty certain for Mr. Olympia competitions, he would push the envelope a decent amount. And this comment pretty much sums it up in my opinion. So Zane is the literal definition of top tier genetics. He's the guy who won three Olympias. He has the best, he has the Zane genetics and he still had to use gear to achieve that physique. So like, I don't know where, how the discussion is being made where it's like, could that physique be achievable naturally? And they're both like, yep. You just need good enough genetics. It's like, well, so Zane had shitty genetics? Like, is he not the literal physical representation of what those genetics could attain? Because he certainly fucking couldn't do it. So anyways, here we go. Am I natural? My opinion on steroids. And I might jump around a little bit. I'm going to put on 1.25 times speed. Maybe I'll just try and talk faster in case you guys move it 
in case you move your speed so then it's sort of like in line when I when you jump your speed up um because I don't want to have a 21 minute reaction video actually I don't know because I haven't watched it so I should probably watch the whole fucking thing so maybe I'll jump around we'll see how much of a tangent they go off on let's talk a bit about the elephant in the room Let's talk about doping steroids. Everyone's okay. curious about this, and I know you want to talk about this more. So uh, let's address first all the rumors, because I'm pretty sure everyone is certain, although that may, may not be true, that you've taken something at some point. Well, I'm happy that uh, you ask this question, because uh, I've seen many uh, speculations, uh, you know, about uh, what I'm taking, what I'm not taking, and uh, it's good that people will hear everything from me, you know. So there are no more speculations about it. Um, so when I was um, when I was in my top shape, mm -hmm. let's say before the before the surgeries and injuries, <clears throat> I was uh, I wasn't taking steroids, but I was taking clenbuterol. So <clears throat> there were many, you know, people were speculating: Am I natural or am I not natural? So he's claiming. Okay, first of all, clenbuterol is not so weak that it cannot be considered a muscle builder. It's actually classified as an anabolic agent by uh, WADA in their like breakdown of anabolic agents they test for in sports, Olympics, etc. It is an anabolic agent that actually has like relatively potent muscle building properties and that's why it's often leveraged by females as one, well, you know, like smart females as one of the first go-tos before looking at androgenic viralizing agents because it is something that can actually induce a reasonable amount of hypertrophy with a concurrent increase in, you know, some energy expenditure, you know, depending on what you're leveraging it for. But it is a, like, a reasonable compound that does satisfy some muscle building properties contrary to popular belief. Now, he's, you know, presumably probably used it just for fat loss and anti-catabolism. So I highly doubt that's what he's going to claim. And I'll let him talk. If you if you check uh, all the statements I made, it was um, I was saying I'm not taking steroids. I wasn't take I wasn't saying I am natural, you know. Yeah, so Clen isn't a steroid, by the way. You know, some people think it is. Interestingly enough, but uh, you know, people took it as natural. As I'm saying, I am natural, you know, and which is normal. <clears throat> um, I uh, the first time I took Clenbuterol was a guy when I was playing basketball. So I, it was one of my uh, last games and a guy from the team gave me this pill and said, uh, you know, this is good. It will give you energy. So I took it. Dude, that's like the most random thing ever. A guy playing basketball, you're like, here, take this thing that increases your heart rate <laughs> and, and it'll help you uh, give you more energy. It's like it might make me fucking shaky out of my tree, but can't see how much it would help in a, in a basketball game. Fuck. And I ran like crazy the whole game, but I couldn't score because my hands were shaking. Yeah, like imagine trying to hit a three-pointer and you're like fucking tweaking out. <laughs> yeah, so this was my first experience uh, uh, with clenbuterol, and uh, I, I don't I don't think that it made a big difference in my physique, uh, especially with the size, because I was uh, just taking it when I was cutting, you know, to help out with the cut. Uh, yeah, to help out with the cut. So I think it just. Uh, made me lose fat easier it's also a pretty potent anti-catabolic agent which i mentioned already but yeah for men in particular with you know 10 times higher androgen levels than females how much of a boost muscle wise are you going to get from it not nearly as noticeable as a woman gets from it when she uses it and that's why you know oftentimes women will use as a base of a cycle you know like 20 micrograms of clen or something like that for a reasonable duration of exposure and uh in his context he basically says that's not why he was using it he was using it just to lose fat then without it but i several times i did a cutting without it so it wasn't a big difference um so yeah that that, that was it like uh you know in my website if you go if you go i remember in my website i put um, a statement you know that i don't take te steroids and i never will you know we'll and i wasn't this. taking steroids that's the thing. It was just going to be But just to sidestep a bit, on all those pictures that I remember when I was just starting out, which was mm -hmm. a long time ago, you looked insane. You mm -hmm. looked really, really good. And off camera, we talked a bit about why that was. So can you explain what the conditions were when you took photos? So it's not just you taking a shirt off and taking photos. You were well prepared for those photos. Maybe that's why you look 
so perfect <laughs> yeah for for the for the first photo shoot on my website i i prepare like i'm preparing for a competition mm -hmm. you know even i did the dehydration mm -hmm. uh, to lose the water so i can look more shredded on the on the pictures so this this was not uh, everyday condition but on the videos on youtube uh, that i have uh, i'm not uh, I don't have, uh, I didn't prepare that much. I just did, you know, every summer I was doing a dieting so I can stay fit for the summer um, and shred it. So I was taking more videos uh, during the summer when I'm at top shape. So this guy is claiming that he looks better than every single top fitness model in the industry right now who's on gear and all he uses is a bit of clen. And then thereafter, he decided he didn't even need the fucking clen <laughs> and he just did it naturally. And he just shits on everyone else without gear whatsoever. And shit's on even Zane, because if he hopped on gear, he would, you know, hypothetically have better stats than Zane with ease. I'm not saying it comes down to stats at the end of the day. Obviously, it comes down to the development of certain body parts, how lean you can get while retaining that muscle, stuff like that. But fuck, dude, not a very uh, believable story in my opinion. Yeah, so just like a regular cut for the beach, not like a photo session cut. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, just on the on the photos, the way you position yourself also plays a role. Cause maybe for perspective, I don't know if you've talked about this, but how what were your dimensions when you were stage ready? So, for example, you're around 180, and how many kilos? What's the circumference of your biceps, thigh, stuff like that? My biceps, the the, the biggest uh, as it was was 44 centimeters, which which is about I don't know how many inches. I think it's like 17.2 inches or something like that. Whereas Zane, his peak bicep size was like 18, I think. But it's like, I know guys who take gear who have fucking 15 inch arms. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's not uh depends how far you want to take it and what your muscle building genetics are like. Just because you have a 17 inch arm doesn't mean that you can get away with claiming natty. I think 20, 20 and no, a half. 25. No, it's, it's, I think it's 17 okay. inches. It's 44 centimeters. I think 20 is like 50 centimeters or 21. I don't know. But some of the guys th th that claim Natty now, they have like uh, 50 uh, centimeters arms. Just as a perspective, <clears throat> what's your height? Uh, my height is 180 centimeters. Okay, so best shape, 180 centimeters, 44 arm, and how much, how many kilos? Uh, if, if I cut for a competition, yeah. I, my, sh my, uh, my arm was like 43, 42. Mm -hmm. And my kilos were about 85, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And um Okay, so he says his weight was actually a bit uh a bit lower than what was previously stated, but still like come on dude. In more fat on your legs, that's why you look insanely shredded in your upper body or, or is it evenly distributed? Mm, I retain fat on my on my lower back, you know, on mm -hmm. my uh, loft handles. Uh on my legs, I remember on the first competitions that I had, they were shredded even my uh, even my ass was shredded my glutes you know so so this guy has striated glutes and he's like realistically like back in the 70s and 80s when guys were winning mr olympias their conditioning was not like i would assume this guy's competition conditioning probably wasn't much different than zane's to be honest like these guys were not showing up with striated glutes back in the 70s and the 80s they were showing up soft compared to you know competitions nowadays so you, maybe even Lazar was uh, leaner than Zane during his show, for all we know, if he had striated glutes and at 85 kilograms still. So um, hard to fucking... Uh, but of course, Zane, who's the three-time Mr. O who took gear, his genetics just aren't as good as Lazar, apparently. Yeah. That's still super impressive, but uh, it's not like you were shredded for, you know, stage ready with 50 centimeter arms. Well, if you <laughs> stay ready for 50 centimeter arms, I don't know. Um, High chance of not being there. How's that a comparison whatsoever? Yeah, but I don't, I don't know who's naughty, who's not. I don't, I don't care actually. But I know that many people are not naughty. They I'm surprised if he doesn't care, he would make a video called "Is Frank Zane's physique attainable naturally?" Well, I guess maybe it's just you know he knows it satisfies the audience, perhaps. So maybe he's just you know playing to that. I just don't speak about it. To me, you know, in the beginning I was saying, uh, I was speaking about steroids, I don't take steroids, I don't take. And then people, I saw that people don't like that thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the people just don't say it anymore because nobody cares. But I think some people are really natural in this. Uh, they just have very good genetics.
And what about now? You know, this was, we were <clears> talking <throat> about you yeah. being at your best shape, but now have you tried anything else other than clenbuterol? Yeah, so after the, after the surgeries, um, it was 2017, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, you know, on my website, I, as I tell you, it was written, I never took and never will uh, took, take steroids, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm a man that keeps to his word. So uh, after this, I took um, um, uh, peptides for uh, recovery, for, for uh, injuries. So I wouldn't be surprised if he took BPC-157, TB-500, something like that. Uh, the name of the peptides was um, TB-500 mm -hmm. and uh, BPC-157. Mm -hmm. uh, these are peptides. They really help for, for my tendon pain so I could uh, continue to work out. I also tried GH. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say, like, why would you have not done GH? Uh, it's, uh, I didn't fail anything from the GH. Just you cut a little bit more. So like if you weren't on gear, you know, taking GH on its own is going to, if you look at any of the clinical data, you'll find, you know, upwards of fucking 20 IU, you're not going to gain actually any contractile tissue. You gain like no strength on it. You just get, you know, some hypertrophy that registers as lean body mass, but it's not actually like real contractile tissue. It is almost like inflated size to some extent because... At the end of the day, the GH is something that complements anabolics, ideally. You know, it's not something that, like if you're using it on its own with absolutely nothing else as a complementary agent for anabolic activity, like you're pretty much just facilitating like improved bone integrity, um, recovery processes, etc. cetera. Um, you know, there's nothing really from a hypertrophy aspect that you're going to get or a strength aspect that you're really gonna get out of it um, other than like the usage here is just like pure Injury recovery and, you know, prevention, ideally in the future. More from it. Nothing special. And, um, yeah, I was still avoiding taking steroids because on my website, it was written that I, I would never take steroids. You know? If you guys didn't know on his website, he writes that he's never taken steroids. You no. Know? And uh, then uh, I think this summer, a couple of months ago, I say, you know, many people suggested that I need to try um, Nandrolone, like de decadrobulin, mm -hmm. for my joint pain. But I was avoiding for so many years because on my website, <laughs> that I will never take. And then I said, fuck it, I will try just a small dose and see if it helps. So now I did three, month, uh, three months on it of, I think, 50 milligrams per week. I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. It's a very small dose. Dude, that would be the dumbest thing ever. Just shut down your entire fucking system to take less androgens then you need to replace physiologic function. So you basically are shutting down your natural test to take less anabolic agent than you otherwise need to fulfill basic HRT things. Like that, whoever advised him is a fucking idiot. And I actually felt, uh, um, you know, benefit of it the, on my joints, especially on my knees, I have less pain. Uh, it's, it's, it's because it uh, lubricates the joint. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think? Will we continue trying, <clears throat> trying and experimenting with, uh, with uh, DECA or are you going to stop now? And like, yeah, The only way you would be able to run that low of a dose of DECA as like a makeshift TRT protocol would be adding concurrent estradiol on top of it to fulfill that backbone because otherwise you're basically just suppressing endogenous testosterone production and you have no estrogen, you have no anything. You're just like functioning. Your entire system is reliant on 50 milligrams of DECA per week to fulfill all androgen related functions, subpar of your like adrenal produced steroids and things of that nature. So it's like, that is a very bad plan. Just going nandrolone only at that low of a dose um, with no kind of ancillaries whatsoever. Uh, I, maybe I'll try uh, this again, this small dose. Um, if I need to push more, I don't know. But um, I don't, I don't want to get into these uh, cycles that bodybuilders do. So like if this was a long-term plan, the most logical thing would be like heavy HRT amount of a test base with the nandrolone concurrently. That's like a very, very common practice at HRT clinics. And obviously, you know, you could debate whether that falls within HRT anymore when you're using not bioidentical nandrolone, even though you could also argue that it's found in trace amounts endogenously. So it sort of is bioidentical. But that would be the only way this would be a long-term viable strategy is having that physiologic amount of testosterone as the backbone to the nandrolone added concurrently on top of it. Because, you know, in the gym, I've seen many people 
that uh, that do steroids and when they are on cycle they look very good and then when they stop they after two weeks they look like they don't train <laughs> so it, it turns out that when you are in your top shape on every i wonder what they just cut out there Julian was saying lazar is using no doubt in my mind you were taking only cleanse or no steroids but now when people don't say yeah, lazar is the... in his best shape you're actually using now yeah that's the... <laughs> yeah i look uh, totally natural now but uh, i'm just not natural now so it just goes to show, like, to be honest, I don't really believe them, but now it is, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to your diet and training. You can use gear. And if you don't go to the gym and you don't train and you don't eat and follow the lifestyle, you won't look like a, you know, fitness model. The reason he looked like a fitness model before, you know, might have, it, a lot might have had to do hormonious, but the diet and the training, like there's a reason why now where he probably is using more than he used to, like if you actually count the combined amount of things he's probably on. Like maybe the dosage is probably less actually. I don't really know. It's kind of hard to say, but you know, he's on GH now, he's on Nandrolone, he's on blah, blah, blah. You know, the reason he looks worse is because he's not training properly and he's not, you know, able to do what he used to do in the gym. So that's like an understandable reason why like sometimes guys could be using a shit ton of stuff, but look absolutely terrible because they're not following the lifestyle in certain aspects. And that's not his own fault. He has limitations that are, you know, injury, injury related. So obviously that's understandable that it's impossible to maintain peak physique, even if you're on drugs, if you can't actually eat, well, I don't know if he can eat properly. I'm sure he can, but train properly to actually give the proper stimulus. So, you know, what's the likelihood he just took Clen in his prime though, if you're willing to experiment with Clen, where a guy at a basketball court hands you a pill and says, take this and you pop it like that without even questioning what is the likelihood that when you're actually dependent your income is dependent on your physique being absolutely immaculate that you're not going to take more stuff like when you're playing basketball was your fucking life income dependent on you taking clenbuterol no you just took it for fuck's sakes but then when you become a physique men's physique like icon you become the top fitness model in the world back when social media was way smaller and you actually had to rely on you know, magazine covers, contracts, sponsorships, blah, 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 stuff that was actually dependent on you staying shredded as fuck and looking absolutely insane. Then you decide to not take shit. Like how likely of a scenario is that basketball? You who didn't need that shit took clen, but then fitness model, you who absolutely needs the prime physique at all times, doesn't take anything, not even clen because he decided it wasn't worth taking clen during his subsequent cutting phases. Come on, dude. Yeah, like uh, I, I'm just using a bit of steroids, but it's for for the joint joint. Yeah, health. I I I don't take it for, you know, to get bigger or something. I just. It almost reminds me of. Uh, <laughs> I know it's not directly relevant, but Marine is like, I'm not on steroids. I'm on a medically prescribed. What <laughs> the fuck is it? I'm on a medically prescribed procedure called TRT. I'm not fighting steroids. I'm not using SARMs. I am following a medical procedure. It's called TRT um, under supervision of a doctor. All right, so it's a bit different than you might have expected, you know? Just, if I don't have pain in my body, uh, without taking anything, I can get the body that I want. The thing is that to get rid of the pain, that, that's my problem. Do you plan on trying anything else then? No, no, I don't, I don't want, as I said, I don't want to get into this bodybuilding cycles. I'm not taking uh, this for, to get bigger. I'm just taking it to get rid of the pain. Yeah, but my idea was like other than steroids, so maybe you haven't tried some other I don't know what uh, what what can you what I don't know what they what do they use. I I don't know as well. I'm just asking out of curiosity. If you, you mean researched. different steroids? Or? Um, not particularly steroids, but there's a lot of let's say different types of doping that uh, athletes use as well, and maybe some of them might have been useful in your case. And just asking out of curiosity, have you? Does this guy sound like strangely familiar to GSP's coach, or is it just me? <laughs> he sounds very to me. He sounds similar. Uh, thought of going down that path? Have you looked at that? No, no. I, I, as I said, I tried uh, peptides, but mm -hmm. they are not for muscle gain. They are just yeah. for um, for um, injuries. And they, I, I felt benefit from them. Like the pain, the pain was going down. So your preferred option right now is to not take anything actually and try to work um, more your, on your recovery, so you don't feel the pain, and then you can do this naturally again. Yeah, that's the. Problem. I don't plan to take clenbuterol again. Um, yeah, I don't think it's good. And maybe it's not even necessary, as you said. Yeah. 
yeah. But uh, I think also one of my mistakes when I was in top shape was that I wasn't taking steroids. Why so? Because uh, I m- I was training very hard and I wasn't recover uh, the same way. So maybe if I was taking steroids, I would recover faster and I wouldn't need to train as hard as I was training to get the body that I had. So now when you're in your late 30s, how are you expecting to get back to what you were before naturally if even in your 20s it wasn't possible to do it sustainably without gear? Like, I don't get it, dude. And maybe you would have preserved your joints in that sense. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because I've seen people in the gym that take steroids, they don't train heavy. But me, I uh, I, I had to train very heavy to maintain this, this shape that I had and the size especially. Do you feel like you maybe made other mistake throughout the years um like communicating what you may have taken or, or the situations in which you take the photos or nah dude it was always on his fucking website are you not listening how would you handle how would, would have you how would you have handled things differently if you had the chance i would uh, take care of my recovery that's the the main mistake i think that i made okay so yeah. about the, the speculations and everything else you're not affected by it you don't care about it it's water under the bridge well, when I looked, uh, you know, because um, when I looked at my shape now from my previous pictures, I'm like, oh, now I understand why people were saying that I'm on uh, steroids, you know. Um, but, you know, when back back then I, I told that I'm too small. I, but now when I'm smaller, you know, I was like, oh, I was very, I, I look on the pictures very big, you know, on the videos. Some people in the comments under the, the first video that we did said that uh, you had uh, bigorexia. Do you know mm. what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think you had it or you just had really high ambitions? Yeah, probably in some way I had it, but I didn't understand that I had it. Like I probably every bodybuilder builder had it. Have it. Uh, most of the people, if most of the bodybuilders or people that uh, do their living with bodybuilding, if you tell them now that they need to stop with bodybuilding, they will get into depression. Also you, probably. For sure. If you are forced uh, tomorrow to stop doing bodybuilding and go to the gym, how will you feel? Uh, depressed, as you said. You will feel depressed. And so this means that we can't live without bodybuilding, right? This makes us some sort of junkies, right? And junkies want more. And Yeah, and junkies want more all the time. But uh, I think this creates a mental problem in people. So what what would your advice be then for people? <laughs> I don't know, because um, now I feel, um, you know, bodybuilding is based only on the, the way you look. If you're a football player and you have to stop to play, you still look the same way, you know? But bodybuilding is based on the look. So it, once you don't have the look, you feel like shit. This is how most of the people will, will feel. My um, my advice is to people, they need to know that they are not just bodies, you know? You are not just body, I'm not just body. It's uh, The mindset is a lot more important than your muscles. See, this is the thing I like about how the fitness industry has evolved since Lazar was in his prime, is back then, you had to be the pinnacle, like, cover model guy. You had to be the guy who was a fake natty. You had to be the guy who was winning competitions and shit and being like the most highly sought after, you know, fitness models for sponsorships and stuff. But now you can be entertaining, you can be charismatic, you can have high quality information, a bunch of things that can set you apart and you don't need to be saucing your face off to set yourself apart in the industry. It's uh, better how it has uh, become. Like some of the top guys in the industry now are guys who've never stepped on stage in their lives. You know, so your advice would be to, not to sound too guru-like, but uh, to, Focus more on the spiritual side, on on your other qualities uh, apart from bodybuilding. So that's not the only thing that you have. So if it goes away, you have other legs to stand on. Yeah, if you have other qualities, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know. But I'm pretty sure that uh, most of the people have it, but they don't understand, you know. And because if you have the the ability to make this body, then you have some qualities, right? Let me throw you back a bit um, on the. the topic on, on, mm. of steroids why did you have this mindset that you will never take and have never taken steroids so what, what were your what, what was your 
thought process behind this? I'm going to tell you exactly. Because at that point, I've reached uh, the physique that I want and the size that I want uh, without steroids. You know, I was taking playing Bulero, which is not steroid. So I've reached this um, physique without steroids. And I said, why would I need it? I would never need it, you know. But that actually goes uh, as a counter argument. You probably didn't have bigorexia because if you had it, you would have wanted to be bigger yet i just wanted shredded. to grow my my parts my my, my lagging the, lagging parts yeah like my chest like uh my legs a little bit yeah that's what i wanted not mm -hmm. not to be bigger i i don't like for me now even my body before it, it's too big you know wow. yeah it's too big um but um you know when when you stop training <clears throat> you look at the bodies way different than before that i'm going to tell you exactly uh, when I was in my top shape and I was uh, looking at, let's say, Jason Statham, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. They probably thought they looked like shit. <laughs> they would, I was like, what the fuck is this? Is this a good body? No, it's it's like, they are too skinny for me. You know, if I stop working out, I will, I'm going to be look like, looking like this. this. This is what I was saying. After I stopped training. Your mindset gets so fucking warped in the fitness industry. You see a guy who's like, literally has like sick abs. He's uh, in shape. Like a lot, a lot of the top celebrities get into shape and you're like, this guy fucking sucks. When I look at their bodies, I'm like, this is a great body. I want to look like this. <laughs> yeah. So you become, you became more appreciative of other people's bodies, work. No, no just expectations uh, are different, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That, that might, might also be a good message uh, to talk a bit about expectations. I was just, uh, my, I was just looking at their bodies from a perspective of a normal person with a this is like almost the problem with being fans of guys in the fitness industry because you develop these unrealistic expectations of uh, looking like Lazar in his prime or like, you know, the uh, modern versions of Lazar um, showing their best Instagram pictures all the time and not showing unflattering angles and shit like that. And it, you know, sets you down a road of just like inevitably never achieving it and just using more and more fucking drugs to try and get there and never achieving it because you don't have the same genetics. It's an unfortunate, vicious circle that many guys in this industry have been thrown into. And even, you know, some of the guys do get there, but I mean, they might have been set on a path of drug abuse that they may have not gone on had they not had those, you know, unrealistic expectations from day one and had a more realistic objective that they would have been happy with, like, you know, Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo or something, or Statham, you know. Even though, even though I, I think I did a natty or not on Statham, and uh, you can you can go check out the conclusion of that one at the time. But I mean, uh, you know, there are individuals in uh, the celebrity world with good physiques, um, like pro athletes and stuff, who I believe are natural and have attainable physiques. Um, but again, those are genetic elites too, so that's why they're at the top of their game. So it's you know could be, even be unrealistic to expect that in many cases. So you can see why this gets people down like a really fucked up mindset. And it becomes a pretty vicious circle in many cases. Normal body, not uh, from a perspective of a bodybuilder, you know? Awesome. Well, uh, th thanks for this discussion. I think it was super productive. Do you want to say something else? Uh, to? Um, I misled many people, uh, especially from the younger generation, mm -hmm. because I see them, you know, me and some other people, they, we started this uh, aesthetic thing, movement. And the, most of the followers were just kids, you know, like uh, teenagers like 14 years old, 15 years old. And for them to get this body at this age, the only uh, way was to take steroids. So this, this wasn't the thing that I wanted, you know? This, this, this was not my goal to, to, to make, uh, you know, younger generation take steroids. My goal was to inspire them to, to train in the gym, to chase their goals, you know, but not this. But, you know, nowadays from Instagram, everyone wants everything at the moment. They want it now. And in some way, I, I think I kind of misled them. Well, it's like even if this guy was natural, anybody who's trying to get to his physique, like they're probably going to take gear and then they're still not going to get there and they're still going to be upset about it. So it's like if that's your mindset about it, it's almost like why even be in the fitness industry if you don't want to mis mislead people that way? You know, so it's kind of a uh, lose-lose the way he's proposing it, unfortunately, for uh, his perspective. Because it's like, people don't think he's natural to begin with. And even if he was, they would still want to get to his physique via whatever means they need to. And 99% of people, it would be 
you know, probably going down the uh, Sazul route, which unfortunately would probably still not net them the same physique. They would end up with a bigger version of their current physique, but not looking anything like perfectly sculpted from the fucking heavens, Lazar Angelov. This was not my, my goal. The, the other thing I want to say is that if you do bodybuilding professionally and you are on a level, uh, you know, you reach the plateau, you know, for, for several years, for five years, uh, for two years, you can't grow. I don't think it's wrong to take steroids at that point. But uh, people take steroids a couple of months after they start uh, training. I, don't, I think that's fucked fucking wrong you know uh, we have great uh, potential to grow naturally and first you need to reach reach, uh, reach this potential and if you are not happy with it then okay you can use steroids if you want you know it's yeah so i pretty much agree with what he's saying as far as uh guys are starting too early i've done videos recently about kids starting shit as early as 14 it's fucking insane so you would think with the high quality information out there now that people would become more educated about the risks and the side effects and they would know that it would be wise to wait until they have multiple years of training and also just as importantly education under their belt before they go into this shit but it doesn't seem to be the case let's see some of the comment section we don't care lazar you are a great person that's only matters if your body do what the fuck you want to do even if you're on PDs, not PEDs, PDs, you're a real legend and also certainly motivated me 10 years ago to start work out. Thanks from Russia, still a gangster, come back soon. I hope our doctor, Coach Greg, sees this. What's up, guys? Derek, moreplatesmoreages.com. Oh, shit. In case you were wondering, HRT has only told... <laughs> oh, shit. In case you're wondering, HRT has already told me to do a video on this. HRT also informed me that Derek would also be doing one. Looking forward to the comments stating how I'm copying his idea. Please share the love and or hate and help with the algorithm. So, Greg is multiple hours ahead of my time zone. So, I guess we shall see who ends up getting the video up first. But, as you can see, <laughs> none of us are copying each other here. So, this is, uh, that's fucking funny though. Anyway, let's see uh, my thread here. Uh, there are super physiological doses of <laughs> bull bullshit rhythm in this video. <laughs> I need Derek comment on this vid. He will, guys. I believe in us. Uh, he probably fucked the joint from too much winstrol. Guys, for sure Derek is going to see this comment. Yep. I came to the comments looking for this. LOL. I look forward to Derek's video on this tomorrow. Uh, man, I instantly imagined that popping up on my feed after I saw Lazar's confession. Damn, you made my morning. All right. Well, I'm off to fucking edit this thing. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I gave my stance um, in the middle of the video and I'm interested to see what you guys think, especially the comparison to Zane. Do you think the Frank Zane physique is achievable naturally given that Frank Zane himself had to take gear to get the Frank Zane physique. And then do you think Lazar is natural? Let me know. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplace underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchy, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch and anything else I'm associated with. It's all in the video description below. I feel like I'm getting faster at this. Shit. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.